Well, today in my little adventure in history, I've come to the Yeovil Steam Rally, the Abbey Hill Steam Rally. So that's what we're looking at today. I'm not going to be talking through it at all. I'm just going to be doing the actual Steam Rally itself and just showing you some of the wonderful sights of our industrial past and how history used to be. Fantastic. The transport companies bought these and made their living and made a lot of money running these units. They were indestructible, totally reliable and just got on with the job, albeit somewhat slow. Nice little foam uh, equipped as a tipper. Now, that's very unusual with the back axle so far back. There must be a story behind that, which uh, I don't know. But motors are just down the road, of course, uh, from the RF, great rival. Atkinson's not far away as well. And there's another Atkinson chapter unit, again, uh, the chapter unit that's uh, carrying the ballast box, probably making it amalgamated with seven and bought by International Harvester. And then we've got another uh, one, same but different, but that one is in, uh, still in its uh, uh, army colours. The one now can be part of the uh, uh, General Hall's fleet in years gone by before it was being on. And then of course the famous Morris Thousand Land, which uh, many of us will know of. Uh, still a few of those out at work. They were 100% reliable, and nowadays you can spend a lot of money on the Morris Towers and you can have them fitted with operation suspension, better brakes, uh, different gearboxes, all sorts of things. I'm here with our good friend of ours. He turns up at lots of shows and he calls one one. A very good afternoon to you, Steve. And to you, John. Lovely day. Lovely day. Now, when we look at the engines, they've all got a size about them, haven't they? And this is a four inch scale, which means you get this. Sorry? Four and a half. Four and a half. Oh, you caught me on that one. <laughs> something like about 10 years old, uh, which you may find rather surprising. To begin the story, Fowler's built four of these super line children's engines, uh, and three of the original ones survived, Supreme, King Carnival, and I can't remember the third one, I can't remember, never mind. But onward, was sold out of children use, uh, and went to pictures. It was used for heavy hauling. And on a trip over uh, the moors heading back for Huddersfield, the back axle broke and it collapsed. The so did the steam engine and the rally for a long, long time now. Uh, and it carries the name of the Zulit Malona, Alfred Payne, who was located in the old. Lovely, it was demobbed and it was then converted to the showman's engine, as you see it here. And we have got the mayor on board, I'm pleased to say, the lady there. Uh, was up for a ride on the main, so she's waiting patiently all day. But for fun's sake, let the yacht drop the chain of office, because if one of these lot runs over it, we should be looking for 
So we've got uh, Cornish Star. Now this is a Garrett, uh, my Garrett's in Leyston. Kitty uh, was out of on the front like Bernard as the name of her brothers who were the original owners. And that Sir Borough, David Stafford, uh, and it was new to Hertz, the family, and they used it for classes. Uh, they let the engine go when they no longer had to work with it, but they kept the classes going. And recently the grandchildren have managed to reacquire the end and reunite it with the fashion drum, so it's back where it started life. Paul Kim Sedgemoor, um, lovely end. It's a single trunk compound, we might go into that if we get tired later on. There's Countess, another uh, Garrett Sheldon's tractor. They were well, the borrow coming in now, this time we've got a double track compound, two cylinders, but two lots of motion and all the bits and bobs that make it work. Lovely engine, uh, on by Nick for quite a long time now, uh, and always kept in very good order. The engine that's back on the rally scene, painted in its original colours you see here, this is Clyde. Uh, it's an Aveling road loco, Aveling and Portable down in Rochester in Kent. Uh, very few of these were built, and even less of them have survived. Uh, this one has been fully restored recently, uh, now lives at uh, Bridport with uh, John Lambert uh, down on the foundry there. And to say it's back very much as it would have been when it was delivered new to the army. First of our steam wagons coming in. This is a Sentinel steam wagon built in Shrewsbury in the Sentinel Works, which still is in existence today. Uh, this is uh, a super, worked originally in Aberdeen. You can see there the Aberdeen Coal and Shipping Company. It worked in the latter part of the days in Aberdeen on maintenance of the uh, harbour, uh, mostly carrying what is rock.